It's the one we call sourdough. It starts, well, it starts the night a number of years ago now, night that Dave's neighbor, Carl Lobier, called and asked if Dave could do him a favor. Carl and his wife, Gerda, lived down the street, they, and they were going to Florida for a month. Wanted to know if Dave could look after their sourdough starter while they were gone. <laughs> Needs to be fed, said Carl. Tablespoon of wheat flour once a week. It'll only take you a minute or two, no more. If anyone else in the neighborhood had phoned with a request like that, Dave would assume they were joking. But Dave had known Carl Lobier long enough to know that he didn't joke about his sourdough. Dave first heard about Carl's sourdough starter at Polly Anderson's annual Christmas party. Carl had brought a loaf of his bread to the party, and Dave, who had missed lunch and breakfast, was stuffing it and everything else he could lay his hands on down his throat. <laughs> Carl materialized out of the crowd and said, I see you like my bread. <laughs> and Dave stood there nodding politely while Carl told him how he got the sourdough starter from his aunt Ola in Germany and how she had got the starter from her mother, Carl's great aunt. It had been in the family for over 32 years. My mother used it too, said Carl. It's good, <laughs> said Dave. <laughs> and it was. Although to be truthful, Dave had been thinking of the bread more as a utensil. <laughs> a delivery device for the great mounds of smoked salmon he was pushing into his mouth. Until Carl mentioned the bread, Dave hadn't really noticed it. I have a genealogy, said Carl. I could show you it if you'd come over. Y you have a genealogy, said Dave, swallowing a mouthful of salmon. Of the starter, said Carl, L like a family tree. I have it in a frame in the den. <laughs> really, mumbled Dave, reaching for the eggplant dip with another piece of the bread. So when Carl and Gerda appeared at his house the very next Christmas with a loaf of bread, Dave realized Carl had misinterpreted his hunger for enthusiasm. Dave and Morley hardly knew the Lobiers back then. Like I said, this was more than a decade ago. So there was a moment of awkwardness when Dave opened the door and saw him standing there. But soon enough, Carl and Gerda were in the kitchen slicing the bread so Morley could try it. Hmm, said Morley, her mouth full, staring at Dave as if to say, why is this happening? <laughs> Dave shrugged. And then the low beers left. They left as abruptly as they had come, declining to eat anything themselves. Well, that was weird, said Morley after they had gone cutting herself another piece of the bread. Dave said, it's better with smoked salmon. <laughs> Night before he left for Florida, Carl phoned Dave with instructions. Usually, said Carl, we take it with us. <laughs> you take the starter, said Dave. On vacation? We took it to Germany last March, said Carl. Gerda carried it in her suitcase. She was going to take it in her purse, but she didn't want it to go through the x-ray machine. She was afraid the x-rays might harm the enzymes. <laughs> Last summer, we took it to the cottage, but it didn't do so well. We had to feed it commercial flour, and when we brought it back, it was pale and out of sorts. <laughs> you took it to the cottage, said Dave. It's done three interprovincial trips and two international ones, said Carl plus a change of planes in Holland. <laughs> Carl explained why he didn't want to take the starter to Florida. Oh, what if there's a tornado, he said. What if the power fails? I don't want to be worrying all the time. It's supposed to be a vacation. <laughs> then he told Dave what he wanted him to do. The starter is in the fridge, said Carl. It's in a mason jar. There's a, a bag of wheat flour on the counter beside the fridge. Once a week, you put a tablespoon of the flour into the mason jar. No problem, said Dave. 
After supper, Dave said, what is starter anyway? <laughs> Morley looked at her husband and shook her head of all the people in the neighborhood, she said. Why did he choose you? <laughs> Dave didn't press the point. Next day, he went for lunch to his pal Kenny Wong Cafe, Wong Scottish Meat Pies. <laughs> Kenny said, making sourdough bread is kind of like making yogurt. You need something to get it going. When you're making sourdough, you use fermented dough from your last batch of bread. That's the starter. In the pioneer days, when you couldn't run to the corner store for a pack of yeast, sharing a starter was a true act of friendship. You should be honored. He didn't give it to me, said Dave. He just asked me to look after it. Still, said Kenny, if, if you don't feed it, it'll, it, it, well, it, you know. No, said Dave, what? <laughs> it's a living thing, said Kenny. I don't know, if you don't feed it, who knows? It'll die or something. <laughs> Dave's first visit to Carl's house was that Friday. He let himself into the house, and he found the mason jar of starter in the fridge. He, pried the jar open and peered in. Starter looked just like moist oatmeal. Pleasing, sour aroma of fermenting yeast wafted up out of the jar and made Dave smile. Looked around for the bag of flour. The kitchen was full of ceramic knickknacks. The walls were covered with framed sayings, scrolls, tea towels from Germany and Arizona. On the counter, there was a set of ceramic containers shaped like dogs. They were lined up in descending order of size, each dog with a little name tag around its neck. Sugar, cookies, tea, coffee. <laughs> Carl and Gerda's kitchen had the feel of a roadside souvenir shop. <laughs> the flour wasn't on the counter where Carl had promised. But there was a brown paper bag by the telephone and it was full of white powder. Dave picked it up and dumped a spoonful into the starter and put the starter back in the fridge. Then he spent half an hour snooping around the Lobier's house. <laughs> Next Friday, when Dave went to feed the starter, he thought maybe it didn't smell quite the same as it did the week before, but, but it was hard to tell. He didn't want to touch it with his fingers, so he got a fork and poked at it and decided it was just his imagination. Put another spoonful of the flour into the jar like before, and he went into the den to look at Carl's books. The third Friday, he went directly to Carl's on his way home from work. He was, he was feeling good. He was feeling happy because on Saturday, he was leaving with Morley and the kids to go to Montreal. They were going to the Laurentian Mountains for a long weekend ski trip. He was going to feed the starter. He was going to go home and pack. So he went in, he fished the jar out of the fridge, and he gasped when he opened it. He ran to the phone. Morley answered on the third ring. The starter, said Dave. The starter. Morley said, who is this? me, said Dave. I'm at Carl's. Something's wrong with the starter. Something was wrong with the starter. Instead of a bowl of moist oatmeal, it looked hard and dry. A and white, said Dave. It's all dried up. I think it's dead. Morley said, you sound like you're reporting a murder. <laughs> I am, said Dave. And then he said, it smells. Morley said, it's supposed to smell. And not like this, said Dave. When Morley arrived, it took her less than a minute to figure out what had gone wrong. This is what you've been feeding it, she said, holding up the brown paper bag Dave had found by the phone. Yes, said Dave. Morley was pointing to the handwriting on the paper bag, Gerda's neat handwriting. Polyfilla, said Morley. <laughs> The low beers were due home on Sunday evening. What am I going to do, said Dave. I don't know, said Morley, heading home to finish her packing, but it's bound to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs>
He called Kenny, Kenny Wong. I think I have a recipe for sourdough starter, said Kenny, I'll come over. When Kenny arrived at Carl's house, he was carrying a book, a carton of buttermilk, a bottle of scotch, and a hair dryer. <laughs> we gotta get going, he said. I found a recipe, it takes three days to make sourdough starter. We've only got two, said Dave. That's what the hair dryer is for, said Kenny. <laughs> Kenny was rubbing his hands together. <laughs> Kenny said, first things first. He started opening cupboards until he found the glasses and he poured them each a big tumbler of scotch. And he propped his cookbook open on the kitchen counter. Book was called Cooking Wizardry for Children. <laughs> Learn about food while making tasty things to eat. Kenny smiled and held up his scotch. I get all my best recipes from this book, he said. You can't be serious, said Dave. <laughs> By three in the morning, Dave and Kenny were anything but serious. <laughs> they were still at step one of the recipe, <laughs> waiting for a cup of buttermilk to warm and collect bacteria from the kitchen air, as the recipe called for, in the natural old-fashioned way. Kenny had the hairdryer set to blow over the buttermilk. It's kind of like forcing a tulip, said Kenny bottle of scotch was half killed. Dave had discovered the Lowbeer's polka records, and Kenny was wearing one of Gerda Lowbeer's aprons and dancing with a mop. <laughs> they finished at 10 on Sunday morning. Kenny had slept on the Lowbeer's bed, Dave on the living room couch. When they left, the sourdough was bubbling like a pot of oatmeal. It Looked sort of the same. It, it smells right, but, but it wasn't bubbling like that, said Dave. That'll slow down in the fridge, said Kenny. And, and there's more than there used to be. There was only maybe half that much, said Dave. Well, Kenny picked up the mason jar and he scooped half of the sourdough into the garbage. How's that, he said. <laughs> that look about right? The low beers arrived home on Sunday as planned. Dave flew to Montreal before they got home, and he joined his family in the Laurentians. When he got home from Quebec on Tuesday night, there was a loaf of bread and a note from Carl on the back porch. You certainly looked after the starter. Thanks for everything. <laughs> he knows, said Dave. <laughs> ah, it's just Carl, said Morley. Dave wasn't so sure. Dave gave Carl a wide berth for the next few months. They didn't rub shoulders again until the first neighborhood barbecue on the long weekend in May. Dave was at the condiment table looking at the buns when Jim Schofield leaned against him and whispered conspiratorially, aren't you gonna have one of Carl's sourdough buns? <laughs> what do you mean, said Dave? Did everyone know? <laughs> Jim rolled his eyes. Carl just gave me his bread lecture. Do you know he has a framed genealogy in his den? <laughs> uh, those things aren't always entirely accurate, said Dave. <laughs> and he felt a wave of relief wash over him. Did he tell you about his aunt in Germany, he asked. Jim nodded. And Dave smiled. He's, he can be a bit much, he said. But I like his bread. And Dave picked out one of Carl's buns from the bowl on the picnic table. And he wandered over to the grill, got himself a hamburger, and then he looked around the yard. There was Carl standing near the fence, all alone. Dave waved his bun in the air and headed over. Thank you.